For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi.com. That's M A S S A J A D Y.com. Hello, this is Masajadi. Welcome to my podcast, Exponential Intelligence. This is episode 108, The Biblical Flood. Or should I say, in a questioning tone, The Biblical Flood? We're talking about the hurricane that hit, um, Hurricane Harvey that hit uh, Texas and uh, is affecting Texas and Oklahoma. We're going to talk briefly about that. Uh, and most importantly, we're going to jump into a medi healing. Uh, trying to help. And I normally don't do this, uh, but in this scenario, uh, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, kind of create a or work on those individuals so they can see a higher uh, understanding of what the flood is about and ascend uh, or benefit from it. <clears throat> you know, as you read the news stories, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why um, uh, situations or natural disasters happen, right? In the Bible, right? Uh, what happened to uh, Noah, right? There's a biblical flood. Uh, people were getting uh, to the people were sinning too much, right? Uh, and well, God had to come down uh, and show His wrath, and then uh, clear up or eliminate those individuals, right? To bring back peace and order uh, onto the earth. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, a lot of Christian folks, uh, are actually. Uh, equating uh, the floods of uh, the, the hurricane of Texas uh, to pretty much uh, a similar situation. Uh, in this, in one scenario, uh, this 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 news publication, religious news publication, is blaming uh, this flood of biblical proportion uh, because the mayor is a lesbian, uh, and Texas is paying the wrath for it. So. Uh, sadly to say, uh, this uh, this paradigm, this consciousness, uh, is still happening to people. Uh, although we are in the 21st century, we should be more intelligent about it. We should have, say, physical evidence or you know, spiritual evidence at least uh, that that because of X, Y is happening. Uh, but this is just hearsay. It's been happening for thousands of years. Again, the sad part uh, about it all is that. Uh, although we live in a civilized, uh, so-called civilized uh, country, uh, this mindset is very rampant, right? and each religion has their own facet or or point of view on why things happen. Uh, and obviously, each religion, uh, to according to their standards, is right. Uh, just to quote what this gentleman is quoting, uh, <clears throat> and I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, uh, it goes on to say that none of the media outlets has connected uh, the dots. None of them has even considered the possibility that these disasters are targeted by the Most High Himself. He quotes uh, Ezekiel 13.13. 13, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, uh, I will make a violent windbreak out in my wrath. Out in my wrath. There will also be in my anger a flooding rain and hailstones uh, to consume it in wrath. Uh, if you read this, uh, and I'm not going to uh, publish it, uh, but it's so backward. Uh, and he goes on to quote, uh, but even if we are, uh, what is it, Galateans? 1.8, but even if we are an angel from heaven, uh, should preach a gospel other than the one uh, we preach to you, uh, let them be under God's curse. So, uh, again, I can understand why <clears throat> religion is getting a bad name. Uh, the thing that I don't understand, uh, of these religious folks, right, uh, there's always... The scientific evidence of why things happen the way they do, even what I do, right? Uh, the way I help heal 
uh, yourself in whether it's uh, physical healing or relationships or uh, spirituality connections or or health connection uh, health issues right uh, there is a say spiritual physics uh, just laws that you cannot mitigate uh, distort it is what it is uh, those laws are even more stricter uh, on the spiritual side, just like, for example, the physical law of gravity here on Earth, we can edit it, right? We can create buildings, we can create machines um, that'll distort, right, or <clears throat> bend uh, the laws of gravity. Spiritual, uh, the laws of spiritual physics, uh, you can do nothing. It is what it is, no matter what situation, no matter what environment, no matter what time frame. Um, uh, it is what it is. Again, we cannot edit it. We cannot distort it. We cannot change it. So, uh, again, that's what exponential intelligence is. Okay? Uh, in religious standards, uh, these individuals are, are crying out to God. Uh, he's demanding uh, that we be of, say, more civilized uh, individuals. Uh, but if you look uh, <clears throat> at today's society, uh, again, although we do call ourselves, say, civilized uh, individuals, uh, there's a ton of killings going on. There's a ton of uh, everything going on okay? uh, from those individuals who call themselves highly spiritual. Um, <clears throat> so if you're going to equate, say, natural disasters, uh, to something a society has done wrong or a group of individuals who have done wrong. There's a lot of questions that, uh, that well, I'd like to ask those individuals. One, uh, if it, in this case, if it is because, uh, you know, Texas has a, a lesbian uh, governor, um, shouldn't just be uh, the non-heterosexuals be affected rather than everybody? And that's one big question. Uh, that I have, and why would God be so random? There's a lot of there's a I think there's a lot more gays and lesbians in other parts of the country or other parts of the world, right? As far as concentration goes, right? Why aren't they affected? So, uh, those are just simple, uh, I want to say childish, very elementary questions uh, that do not even come into these people's minds before they spout out this garbage uh, that they talk about, and then they back it up uh, according to the Bible, according to their religion. Let's go ahead and take a nice uh, deep breath in. Um, there's just so much going on, <clears throat> uh, so much information that's coming through. Uh, it's almost like stifling me um, and it's all it's very similar uh, to what I was uh, those questions that I was asking about so it's not really worth repeating um, sadly to say sadly to say that <clears throat> as this universal truth, this wave of universal truth that comes through. And I call it a universal tr truth because, you know, humans have such an ego. They, they think that they're the center uh, of the universe, uh, although scientifically it's proven that they're not. Okay? Uh, but we still think through religion, uh, no matter what religion or through spirituality, that, you know, we are, say, the main focus of God. Okay. So when I say universal wave of truth coming through, uh, it is um, the universes that that um, are affected, say, by this space-time continuum. So in this case, it's a 24-hour clock. Okay? Uh, that's the way uh, time and space work in this reality. So all realities that exist in this same space-time parameters will get affected by this universal truth that comes that comes through um, the reasons for the universal truth is because the extremes the purity right purity and the darkness right the distortion the destruction uh, both extremes have to be eliminated the way they get eliminated 
is that, uh, again, a wave of awareness or a, a higher frequency wave. And by higher frequency, is like we're low vibrating uh, um, <clears throat> uh, specimens. And that's why we create so much density. Okay? Uh, this next phase is a higher frequency, a truth wave. So as we ascend or as we have to get forced to... Uh, to vibrate at a higher frequency, well, the distortions that come from both sides, whether it's purity or darkness, those have to be eliminated. Okay? Uh, and that's why this wave is coming through. It's been prophesied, you know, in the Bible, in the Quran, uh, in other religions or scriptures as well. Uh, and this is the EI's perspective on it. So that is accurate. That's say, the real reason why this purity wave is coming through. It's not because uh, people have been demonized, distorted. However, and maybe this, uh, this is probably another podcast, uh, <clears throat> however, uh, people do get, say, demonized and do distort it, uh, but they do not pay, say, the rep uh, repercussions uh, the way these religions talk about it. Okay? Um, from an EI perspective, uh, the flooding uh, or hurricanes or the extreme weather patterns uh, that we're having is really not about, say, the destruction or the inhumane um, behaviors against other humans. Um, it's not the wrath of God in any way. Uh, in fact, it's just uh, it's just natural trends of the earth. Uh, every ten thousand or so years, uh, the natural say weather patterns of Earth change. Uh, even before humans existed, um, there's solid evidence uh, that weather patterns you know, change every 10,000 or so years. Uh, we're on the cusp of that 10,000 year, uh, I believe. And again, I'm just reading from tapping into um, the Universal Database. I'm sure you can back it up if you Google this. Uh, we're reaching towards the cusp of that 10, you know, the 10,000 year, uh, thus the Earth's parameters are changing, thus the weather has to change accordingly. And it's not just Earth, uh, it's other planets as well. Uh, I believe Pluto, uh, and don't quote me on this, I believe it's Pluto uh, or Venus, <clears throat> one of those two um, one of those two planets, although Pluto is not considered a planet anymore. Um, um, natural greenhouse gases. Uh, uh, although there's no automotive emissions uh, in those two planets, uh, they're much higher uh, than ever before. Okay. So again, there's no human intervention there. Why is it higher there? So uh, again, overall, the planetary systems is shifting. Earth is one of the planets. That's why it has to shift. Again, it's not because we've done wrong uh, uh, and we're getting, say, punished by it. It's not a creator, God, looking down on us, being disgusted uh, by what we've done, uh, and then punishing us. Uh, again, that's the first law of all those religions that they <clears throat> uh, demonize or, or or have this uh, or have this perception that uh, you know God will punish us is that uh, there's free will. Right? Uh, if there's free will, why are we being punished? Um, I mean, those are just, again, simple elementary questions that should be resolved before these religions talk about, say, situations or why God does what it does. It has to make sense. Uh, at an elementary level or at a kindergarten level, uh, it doesn't make sense. But yet, Highly intelligent individuals still believe uh, in those paradigms, uh, and that's what I don't understand, <clears throat> or that's what boggles me uh, as well. Um, as this as this truth comes through, as this wave of truth comes through, uh, or through, uh, what'll happen is that um, what'll happen is that uh, society as a whole, or humans as a whole. Okay. Um, we'll start becoming very, uh, we'll start becoming very nervous. As animals can sense uh, any devastation coming through or any transformation uh, coming through, uh, for example, cockroaches, uh, the most successful 
a living creature. Uh, it's been around for millions, if not billions of years. Um, well, they can sense, uh, again, any hurricane, tsunami, uh, and they get nervous and they uh, go ahead and protect themselves. Uh, they can sense any earth changes, uh, again, throughout tens of thousands of years. Uh, what happens is the earth uh, transforms itself, the weather patterns change, uh, and they, they go in hibernation. Uh, and, and again, that's why they've been the most successful uh, living uh, creature spanning lifetimes uh, of millions and millions of years. Uh, same thing with animals. But, uh, weeks or days before uh, a tsunami hits, a hurricane hits, uh, animals tend to uh, move on to higher grounds uh, because they can sense uh, whatever is going to be coming uh, to them so they can protect themselves. Uh, same thing with humans. And the reason why I talk about this uh, on the Texas uh, flood here is because as this purity wave comes through, it's not a physical wave, uh, this purity, this frequency, uh, and it is an, an actual frequency uh, washing through, uh, and I call it a purity wave, uh, and I can get more into it maybe on another podcast, but in a nutshell, uh, purity wave is us ascending to a higher level. So uh, as the earth stands today, uh, it needs to have, say, extremes of, 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 say, light and dark, hot and cold, right? There's extremes for us to understand um, what it means to be here in present form. We need those extremes as a differentiation to, uh, to know exactly where we are. Uh, we would never know that what love is if we didn't understand hate, right? Uh, for example, if, uh, if you were born blind, I could describe, say, light to you or colors to you all day long and you would never understand it because you can never experience it. Same thing here. Uh, for us to really understand true joy, true love, true, true euphoria, true understanding of what, say, spirit is, uh, we'd have to have the opposite. And this goes against uh, any, say, religious theme. Uh, the opposites are there because we did something bad. We were of sin. Uh, we created sin. And that's why, uh, again, the darkness is there, the distortions in there. That's, none of that is true. It just really is just straight out physics. Yeah. We, need the, we need the darkness uh, to see the purity that we are. That's all there is to it. Okay? It's not about being good. It's not about being bad. It's not about um, anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so as I was uh, explaining, as this purity wave comes through, washes through not just the earth, but again, the whole universe of, of, of space and time that has, say, this 24-hour uh, format washes through, uh, clarity has to happen. Things have to change, including weather patterns. Um, and as this wave comes through, just like the animals that can sense some sort of danger coming through, uh, in this case, uh, not necessarily danger, but a purity wave coming through, um, well, as humans, because we are animals, uh, we'll get to sense uh, those frequencies washing through, and then we get nervous. As we get nervous, just like any other animal, we'll tend to revert back to safety. Okay? And in safety, uh, what that means is not, say, the best option in most cases because we revert back to what we're most used to because that's what safety means to most individuals. So if you are of an extreme supremacist, for example, or if you are of extreme whatever, you would revert back to your extreme because that's the safest say, place for you. So what that means uh, in this in this situation or this individual um, blaming uh, the lesbian uh, mayor or governor of Texas for, say, attracting floods in her state okay? sounds ridiculous again, even to this even in this days. But it happens uh, as this frequency goes through. Uh, it magnifies all the distortions that we have. We run back to safety. We revert back to, say, Stone Age mentality. Uh, and so you'll get, and this is what's happening throughout the country, throughout the world. You'll see separatism 
coming through. You know, more hatred against the blacks, more hatred against women, more hatred uh, again gay and lesbian individuals, more hatred against uh, you know uh, those individuals of different. Uh, cultures and races. This is why this is happening. Uh, look at our presidential election. There was a lot of separatism even within uh, the group of men and women uh, that were running for president. There was a lot of hatred in between them because they were thinking that their way was right uh, and their way is not uh, is not right at all. Uh, they were just more comfortable thinking, proving to themselves that it's right. Uh, so in the near future, uh, uh, we're going to see more separatism, uh, and that's the process that'll happen. So it's actually a good sign. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it's actually a good sign that the old patterns are breaking. It's not the end of the world, uh, but the old infrastructure that we are relying upon is falling apart. Uh, this happens at a personal level as well. And not just societal or uh, countries, it'll happen to you at a personal level. So what that means is that uh, this purity wave comes through, it shows all the distortions that you are, uh, you get fearful, and instead of moving forward going, hey, uh, this is not good for me, uh, what we do is revert back to our old self. We want the old things coming back. Um, as proof, uh, you'll see that, well, uh, old songs are are more popular. Uh, record players are coming back. Uh, a lot of nostalgia is coming back. Uh, that's a rendition, uh, again, of claiming back or claiming uh, that comfort zone that we came out of. Let's go ahead and take a nice uh, deep breath in. Again, as I continue to work on you throughout uh, uh, the talk, and I just want to really, really, really stress that uh, it's nothing that humans do that God looks down upon us and then judges us and then blames us or worse yet, punishes us. Uh, that's really, that's against the first, uh, the first law of God, free will. So why would why would God in this case uh, and and this is in any religion or any spiritual movement really because spirituality is turned into another religion um, why would the first law be uh, free will uh, and then the, then you'll have judgment uh, put against you if you didn't do uh, things right or his way level well, kind of a joke uh, that I heard. Um, you know, God created, uh, you know, the billions of stars, put it into perfect motion, he created the ecosphere uh, of the planet Earth here, um, uh, and then gave John cancer. Uh, or in this case, you know, a small group uh, punishing them uh, by flooding them out. It just doesn't make sense in, God, in God's, say, world or God's to-do list. There's another joke. Uh, back when the uh, back in the day when God was creating uh, Earth, you know, He said, "Put freaking water everywhere," uh, and and His angels were going, "Oh, I get it." Uh, so when they get thirsty, when those humans get thirsty, um, they can drink, uh, and then God said, uh, "Make it undrinkable." Uh, again, God would not ever ever do so those types of things uh, to humans. It's not a test. Let's go ahead and get. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the meta healing. And normally, I don't do meta healing on, say, world strife. It's not because I'm not compassionate or because I'm cold or anything like that. Uh, it's just not my place. Okay? Uh, I'm not here because uh, I get a lot of requests. It's must. Well, why can't you heal the world? Why can't you bring in world peace? Uh, again, that's against free will. Right? There's a lot of individuals that don't want world peace, uh, whether it's at a conscious level. Uh, or at a not awakened spirit level. Obviously, their spirits are not awakened, uh, but again, that's free will to be not awakened to create the wars and devastations. In time, uh, again, as this purity comes through, this wave comes through, uh, they'll start to get shaken up, and they'll go, oh, 
okay, this isn't right. And then they make that conscious decision of free will to uh, not um, um, n not get into, you know, wars, devastation. Uh, I didn't finish my, my, my message on extremes. So as this purity wave comes through as well, what happens is that uh, we go to a higher order, the extremes of both purity uh, and, say, the severe devastation uh, gets cut off on either side. Uh, and then in due time, another purity wave comes through and those extremes get cut off. Uh, and then another purity wave comes through uh, and the extremes get cut off. So eventually we are just a oneness, a singularity, uh, r r uh, complete uh, neutral, just like on the other side, just on the spiritual side. And when that happens, uh, you you have uh, your spiritual essence in physical form without distortions. Right? So again, being here on the earth plane without a human body, being totally conscious of who you are. Again, spirits walking in the earth or heaven on earth. That's what it's really all about. So let's jump into the meta healing. And the reason why I'm doing this is that uh, this is a great opportunity for those individuals who are awakened by this devastation. And those uh, awakened individuals will use this as a tool to ascend higher. So when they recreate their life, uh, they'll be different. Their lifestyle will be different. Uh, not because they've been bad or good, because, but their lifestyle will be at a higher order, at 360 degrees of abundance. Right? So they'll be, uh, they'll be in better health. They'll have better relationships. They'll have money. So they can do what they were meant to do here. They can focus on connecting to pure source even stronger without worrying about, without being enslaved uh, about working, about relationships, about anything physical here. Let's go ahead and get started. Sitting, standing, lying down. Taking that breath in. Again, inhaling through the nose nice and strong. Holding it for a few seconds. And then releasing through the mouth slowly. If you're new, welcome. And just noticing your position. Throughout the talk, you might uh, be feeling different. You might be a little more relaxed. I urge you not to really, not to drive. Uh, if you are one of those individuals, you get a little distorted uh, as I speak or work on you. Uh, strong breath in again. And same process, inhaling through the nose, holding it, releasing, letting go as I generate those frequencies that help you shift, help you transform beyond meditation, beyond hypnosis. And even now you might be feeling a little more relaxed as the shoulders start to relax and get heavy in the muscles of the arms. Try to let go of all that tension of the day, of the week, the month, the lifetime. Taking that conscious breath in. Nice and strong again. Wondering how many people are listening to this podcast. Hundreds of thousands. Creates a lot of momentum, a lot of strength. We all want that same thing. Higher abundance in any form. So we're all looking at the same direction, which creates momentum, it creates strength. We'll take advantage of that strength to allow us to break free uh, from those shackles that bind us, that keep us in our old situations. And then noting your breath, strong breath in again. So I'm asking ourselves, how do I connect to pure source even stronger? 
Again, that question, how do I connect to pure source? Even stronger. Nothing religious, nothing spiritual. As you settle into your sternum, the bone uh, in front, uh, your chest, where the ribs connect. However, if you are of a religious or spiritual flavor, uh, this will help enhance you, purify the understanding of that religion or spiritual movement. So it will actually benefit you. All you have to do is pay attention to your sternum. And then we can focus in on Texas, uh, the other states that have been affected. Or if you'd like, any other place in the world that you'd like to concentrate on. Perhaps you have family in other places of the world that I'm sensing. Like, well, what about... Uh, Lebanon, what about uh, any other country, Afghanistan, whatever it might be. Sure, you can go ahead and do that as well. As we take another strong, pure breath in and inhaling through the nose, holding it for a second or two, and then exhaling. And then focusing in on whatever state or country you want to focus in on. And if we can, not focusing in on uh, the devastation, just focusing in on the place. So not sending out healing energies of love or passion or compassion. As I continue to work on you, as I continue to work on whatever place on earth that you are focusing in on through you. Uh, that might sound a little different than what you're used to, right? Send out patterns of love, which is totally fine. Uh, but let's send out a higher frequency. Higher frequency is no judgment, none, nothing, non-judgment. Holding that space, just that, holding that space of purity. Um, because love, uh, again, it's a great emotion, <clears throat> makes you feel good for a little bit, but doesn't really help things in the longer situation, uh, in, in these cases. So holding that space of neutrality, again, the space of non-judgment, the space of just you being your purest thought, your purest form. By the way, that's the way pure source, or what you may call God, does it. It holds that space of neutrality for you without judgment. Which allows anything, those awakened, those awakened individuals, uh, to attract anything that they need, whether it's love, whether it's food, water. This is where miracles happen when we allow that space of emptiness. This is where our prayers really work. And that's the difference between most prayers out there 
Uh, and then exponential intelligence definition on a prank for the masses. As I continue to work on you, working on through you, strong deep breath in. On the exhale, holding your sternum, your heart space, your solar plex. Just allowing it to be. Allowing you to be who you are without the distortions. Right, Settling you back into neutrality. So all possible solutions are available to you. Noting your chest from the front all the way through into the back. So you focus in on any part of the world that you'd like. Sending out pure frequencies of non-judgment, allowing any solution to come in to help those who want it and those who don't, uh, blessing them for the path that they've chosen, no matter how unawakened they are. Go ahead and take a nice, strong, deep breath in. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and leave you in this space for as long as you wish, as long as you stay in this space, quietly meditating on this matter healing. 
it will be connected to that mastermind group, which allows you to transform your life and those who are in need. As I leave you, thanks for listening to the podcast. If you have any comments or questions or ideas on podcast topics, uh, send us an email. Notice what you notice, and then notice the details of what you notice. For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi.com. That's M-A-S-S-A-J-A-D-Y dot com. Or join us on Facebook for more information. We do a lot of Facebook Live.